Assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, I hope everyone is doing well. Uh, they uh, that you have been enjoying the program thus far. Uh, my name is Bilal Bakay, and we are going to be shortly getting started uh, with the next uh, session, inshallah. Uh, so we have a great lineup of speakers, uh, alhamdulillah, as, as well. Um, I just wanted to make some quick announcements. Uh, one of the main goals for this conference, inshallah, is to uh, inspire you guys to join uh, ICNA uh, um, Ikna and uh, with in, in your local communities. Uh, please, you know, look online, look to volunteer. You can go on www.icna.org slash volunteer. Or um, you can also participate by donating, as you can see uh, below, that we are in deep uh, need uh, for your financial contribution. Uh, typically, you know, the convention would be a great spo uh, uh, location where we would be able to do this. But unfortunately, due to COVID, um, the pandemic has uh, caused uh, a lot of our cash flow to be uh, to resend as well. So please uh, make sure, uh, if you are able to, to go on www.icna.org. Uh, and click donate. Um, a guest is going to be joining us, and there, Dr. Shah is going to be talking about the meaning of Iman on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Um, Dr. Shah Rafiq, he is the Vice President of Tarbiya for Ikna National. He's also a community leader and a member of National Shura. Uh, he's also a, a great personal friend of mine. So with, without further ado, I would like to introduce Dr. Shah Rafiq. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم فالذين آمنوا به وأزروه ونصروه واتبعوا النور الذي أنزل معه أولئك هم المسلمون قال أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا ترفعوا أصواتكم فوق صوت النبي ولا تجهروا له بالقول كجهر بعضكم لبعض أن تحبط أعمالكم وأنتم لا تشعرون صدق الله العظيم. My respected brothers and my sisters, today inshallah I'm going to focus my talk on this ayah I read from Surah Araf. And before I start going in specific topic, I would like to remind myself and everybody. You know, our faith, our Iman, the very foundation is on our acknowledgement, respect, adab of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's why Imam Ibn Qayyim Rahmatullah said it is mandatory for every Muslim to know the history to know the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The ayah from Surah Araf, which I have read, Fallazina Amanu Bihi Wa Azaruhu Wa Natharuhu Wattaba Nur Aladi Unzila Mahu. You know, in my first speech this morning, I have already covered this very first instruction that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving that if you want to be among successful people, if you want to be succeeded, you want real falah, then you have to have these four qualities that you have to have a faith on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet and wa'azzaruhu and then you should respect, you should regard, you should have waqar of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa nasaruhu and then you help him, you do his nusra in the mission of the Prophet Muhammad and then you follow this new Quran that Prophet Muhammad has brought. For the first part for Iman, I will just say one thing that Iman here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the beautification of our inner Iman. Iman that which is unshakable. Iman in all circumstances. Nobody, nobody can shake my Iman. Inna lazina qalu rabbuna allahu summa staqamu ta tanazzalu alayhimul malaika tu allah ta khafu wa la tahzanu. 
that once I have Iman and I am steadfast on that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that I descend on these people, my angels. Allah tahafu wala tahzanu. And my angels give them this glad tiding. There is no reason for you to be scared or to be sad or to be fearful. Rather, you are among the pupil on the right path. This Iman, which beautifies us from inside, I will also share this phrase, truthful person who has the beauty of Iman inside with all his deficiencies and defects is acceptable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And brothers and sisters, that's why Prophet Muhammad sallam had worked 13 years in Mecca to make this Iman on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet and the, and the belief in Akhirah so deep in the hearts that this Iman was not just the few words the Sahaba were uttering, rather it was part of their bloodstream. The second condition Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts وَأَزَّرُوهُ The do ikram of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Do adab of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Regard of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And especially in this time and age we live where we have really lost this institution of adab in the society in general. There is no adab of teacher. There is no adab of parents. There is no adab of elders. We have to teach and remind and refresh to ourselves and to our family and to the fellow human beings that what really adab means, what really ikram means. And especially when it comes to the religious icons like the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that that means that if we transgress our boundary, if we do bay adabi, even by mistake, we may lose all our hasanat. I may lose all my prayers. I may lose all my zakat, umrah, and hajj. That's why the ayah I read from Surah Al Hujrat Ya you alladina amanu la tarfau athwata kum foka sot in nabi. Wala tajharu lahu bil kolika jahri badi kum li badin. Antahbata amal kum wa antum la tashurun. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning us that don't raise your voice above the voice of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because if you will do that, then there is a possibility that you will lose all your good deed and then you will not even know that. My brothers and my sisters, the understanding of this ayah in today's perspective is whenever there is a mention of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we should stay quiet. We should not stay engaged in, con in personal conversation. Whenever somebody presents to you and me any hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, any saying of the Prophet, I have no right to reject that immediately. Rather, if I'm not sure about that hadith or the saying of the Prophet, I can excuse myself that I need some time to confirm that this is a saying of hadith, but do not reject. You know, do not reject if somebody brings any hadith to you. And whenever we visit the masjid of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu we always keep our voice down. And one of our Imam, you know, who used to live in America, now moved to Pakistan, he used to tell us that whenever I visit the masjid of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and I pass close to his hujra, his cover, his grave, that I always keep my gaze down because that is a hujra of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and that is the house of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and Haya of the Prophet was more than a virgin girl, my brothers and my sisters. So the respect of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu we have to be very, very careful 
when it comes to ikram and you know as azaz and uh, respect of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the next command comes wa nasaruhu now what kind of nusra allah subhanahu wa taala is talking about here and you and me we know the ghaira of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he did not needed any help from us in his personal capacity because as it is narrated in sahi ahadith if prophet if prophet this was his ghaira if he had dropped anything on the floor he will not ask anybody to help him the ghaira of the prophet to the extent hazrat aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala anha narrates that one afternoon we saw a prophet coming to our our house and this was very unusual according to the custom of arabs that arabs usually in afternoon do not visit each other's house because this is a rest time but when we saw prophet coming towards our house his face was covered and as soon as he entered the house he said to abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu that i have received permission from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to migrate and abu bakr radhiyallahu ta'ala and anho immediately responds ya rasulullah i have two camels ready for us to ride on but prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam look at the ghaira of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says abu bakar i will use your camel only with one condition that i will pay for it so hazrat abu bakar started crying ya rasulullah you are going to pay me for this so i want to make it clear when allah is talking here about the nusra of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the help of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam this help is not in his personal capacity this is the help in the mission of the prophet huwa allazi arsala rasulahu bil huda wa din al haqq li yuzhira wa al din kulli walau karih al mushrikun wa anzalna al hadid fi bas shadid wa manaf lil nas wal ya'lam allahu may yansuruhu wa rusulahu bil ghaib inna allah qawiyun aziz this is the nusra allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about as it is said in surah saf surah tauba surah fath and the last ayah i read from surah hadid the nusra of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is to help in the mission of the prophet and the mission of the prophet was to establish the deen of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to make us understand this deen was to apply this deen on ourselves and spread the word among the people around us my brothers and my sisters i always ask one question to my audience if prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam would have suggested to abu jahal utba bin rabia and all the tribe leaders of mushrikeen in makka that the purpose the mission of me is just to pray in kaaba and just to do the tawaf of kaaba do you think abu jahal utba bin rabia and all these tribe leaders would have rejected him no would have they resisted him no but they all knew the meaning of kalma la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah even the enemies knew وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنْفَاءَ وَيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَةِ even the enemies of islam knew the meaning of these ayahs the meaning of this kalma the kalma is an invitation of transformation is a revolution change in personality change in the behavior of people change in the mindset of people change in the approach of the people even enemies of allah subhanahu wa taala enemies of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam knew the meaning of kalma la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah that's why they had resisted my brothers and my sisters that's why we have to be very clear islam is not all about just praying ya wusat e aflaq mein takbeer e musalsal ya khaq ke aagosh mein tasbeeh o manajat wo mazhab e mardan e khuda ga khuda mast ye mazhab e mulla o jamadat o nabadat allah akbar says there are two categories of muslim 
one muslims are those that they have made this mission of their life to keep the word of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala high they want to make sure they reach out they knock the hearts of the people doors of the people to deliver this message of islam the message of peace the message of mercy the message of unity my brothers these are the people and there is a second category of muslim and they have understood this religion this religion is just doing some you know zikr of allah sitting in masjid or khanka iqbal says the first, first category wo mazhab e mardan e khuda ga khuda mas these are the people they have understood the true mission of life true meaning of life true reason that allah has called them that we have created you on ahsan e taqweem we have made you ashraful makhlukat we have made you our khalifa so this category of muslims they have understood the purpose of their life and they have made this mission of their life to seek the love of allah subhanahu wa taala pleasure of allah subhanahu wa taala while the other category of muslim who are busy just in tasbih iqbal says this whole universe is doing tasbih of allah subhanahu wa taala subbaha lillahi ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard so he is saying the ye mazhab e mullah o jamadat o nabatat is a human being ashraful makhlukat creation on asan e taqweem these mountains and trees and everything this universe is praising allah subhanahu wa taala is doing tasbih of allah subhanahu wa taala if you as a khalifa of allah as ashraful makhlukat as a khalq asan e taqweem if you are also only doing just tasbih of allah then what is the difference between you and these mountains and these trees my brothers and my sister that's why i remind myself and everybody among audience you know the purpose of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is to teach us bring some meaningfulness in our life meaningfulness with mission meaningfulness helping prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the mission that he came with my brothers and my sisters the next thing allah subhanahu wa taala is saying what about nur allazi unzila ma'ahu that follow this nur of allah subhanahu wa taala the quran you know i will conclude with this message from the life of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam if we are really true believer of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in this environment of hate discrimination in this environment where people are even not having any regard for religious icons people have no regard for faith we come out as a people of hope we spread love among the people because our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is one that he used to make dua for people who used to abuse him if they have would if they were throwing stones on him on him he was making special duas for for them to allah subhanahu wa taala if there is a woman throwing trash on him and if he doesn't see her the next day he goes and knocks her on her door to make sure that she is okay our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam came to save every single soul from the fire of hell my brothers i will share with you this story narrated by anas bin malik radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu and then i will close anas bin malik radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu says that we were sitting in masjid nabi and the news came there is a son of jew who is about to die and prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam as soon as he heard this news he rushed towards the house of that jew we all might have heard this story but i want to go in little, little detail of that story to refresh our memories that how loving was our prophet regardless of their faith regardless of their color regardless of their background because this is a saying of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that softness brings sweetness and harshness makes everything bitter 
So softness, love is the true message from the life of the Prophet ﷺ. Hazrat Anas bin Malik says that Prophet rushed so fast towards the house of that Jew child that we all got out of breath. Was difficult for us to catch on our breath, to, to run with Prophet ﷺ the way he was moving towards the house of that Jew child. And as soon as he reaches to the house of that Jew child, he sits next to the child and invites him to say Kalama La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. And we know the story. The child looks at his father and the father says to the son, listen to Abul Qasim. Whatever Abul Qasim is saying today, follow that. And this child says this kalama, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. And after that, he passed away. And Anas bin Malik says that Prophet came out of the house of this Jew child. And you can see on his face how relieved, how relaxed, and how happy he is by saving one soul from the hellfire. My brothers and my sisters, this is our responsibility as a Ummah today to save every single soul from the fire of a hell because we have that Noor. We have that light. We can enlighten the hearts of the people. We can bring peace in the life of the people. We can transform the life we can take away all the insecurity we see in the lives of the people. Besukuni, we see all the pain and misery and suffering in the life of the people. We as a Muslim, we have that treatment. We have that remedy to treat the people. Our problem is that we are not reaching out. We are not knocking on the doors and the hearts of the people. I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he gives you with this tawfiq that we live this life according to this kalma la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah whenever we want to die this is our dua that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us this tawfiq that we have this kalma on our tongue and if we want to make sure that we have kalma on our tongue then we have to live our life according to that kalma wa akhiru dawana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, Dr. Shahid for those uh, the beautiful reminder it was very inspirational words um, and we uh, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he brings us or he makes us of the second category of individuals that were mentioned who will raise the, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continue to do so with in, in our form of actions uh, as our ibadah inshallah um, so jazakallah khair guys uh, for sharing uh, gems with us and about the life of the Prophet I mean, this is just a small uh, step in the right direction of learning about our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so hopefully uh, today you were motivated uh, by a, a speech a lecture a quote a gem that will make your journey uh, into to learn about the the Prophet Sallallahu life uh, and start that journey inshallah um, and with that I would also like to thank the organizers who put this together um, it's amazing that uh, alhamdulillah even within a pandemic we are able to connect each other and convey the message uh, to the best of our ability and uh, as mentioned throughout the program today one of the main goals of this conference is to inspire attendees um, to, to, con to act to get up and volunteer, uh, to do something uh, and, and inspired by the life of the Prophet Sallallahu whether it's uh, participating through um, ICNA or elsewhere within your local community, but at least become active. Um, and lastly, I would like to just request everyone that if you have not are not volunteering with ICNA, be sure to sign up. You can go to www.icna.org slash volunteer and you can sign up and become part of a local chapter. One of the greatest things about ICNA is their grassroots effort. And so their local chapters, local units uh, that you can engage with, inshallah. And lastly, uh, if you are able to uh, donate 
uh, with if not your time but financially make a monetary contribution please do so by visiting www.icna.org donate